Welcome back to BMW Today. My name is Joy and we are here at the BMW Group Classic. Today it's all about classical cars of BMW. And therefore, I have Benjamin Foss, spokesperson, with me, right? Right, but you could call me Benny, that's easier. Okay, thank God. Benny, how are you doing? I'm fine, so I'm here, so everything's great. You prepared quite a little bit for us. Uh, to be honest, this is not prepared. This is daily work. Cars are here in our workshop being maintenanced, prepared. This is really the heart of the history of BMW. Everybody who is working around the history is based here. And there's something more interesting, and this is the collection, which we will take a look at it now, and then I can show you some champs, I some can't gems. wait. Yeah, then let's go. But I have something for you. You will need them afterwards. Am I your driver today? Not my driver. We won't drive, but you'll see. Okay, fine. Let's go. Follow us. Let's start with the legend. 507, right? Exactly. Three, Three of, of them. them. Yeah. This is, in fact, a very special one. This is what I brought the gloves for. I, I thought so. Let's push it out and I show you where to grab the push. car. Yeah, where to grab. This is one of our most valuable okay. cars. I'm sure you're going to tell me in a while why. Yeah. This car was driven by Elvis Presley during his time here in Germany while he was at the army. Really? So this is the king's car. But I thought that one was red. In fact, Elvis painted it red. So oh. when he got it, it was white, okay. the same way it's now. And then there's the legend that every morning when he wanted to go to the barracks at the US Army, he got messages written with lipstick on his car, like Elvis, I love you, different phone numbers, oh, call me. Oh, wow. And he said, okay, no, I don't want this anymore, so I simply paint the car red, and then nobody is able to ride it with red lipsticks. Okay. That's the legend. And how did you get the car back? We got in contact with Jack Hester, that was his name, and uh, yeah, we managed to get the car back to Munich mm -hmm. and managed to restore it the way it was. It came off the production line. The condition was pretty bad. Somebody took out the engine, put in an American V8, made a drag racer out of it. Okay. And then, so I guess there were like six or seven color changes that we noticed while restorating, on the, uh, well, restorating the car. Oh, wow. How many were produced? In total, 251 oh. were produced. So if you see those three, that's, that's more than 1% one per, one percent of the production volume. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we're lucky to have them here. Cool. And to show them to our visitors. Little history in that car. Yeah. So we can move on to the we next We can move car? on. I have some other stuff to show you, which is quite interesting. So okay, let's, let's go. go ahead. Well, this looks like a normal 7 Series. Yeah, but it's everything else than normal. Okay. So uh, I open the bonnet and you start to count, okay? Okay, I try my best. <laughs> no way. That's 16. That's the V16. That's the Project Goldfish car. I thought that was a myth. Well, um, did they develop a complete new engine, or how was it? How was the process? In fact, the the head of engine development, Mr. Or Dr. Lange, he called his 12-cylinder specialist, okay. Mr. Fischer, and he said, "Would you be able to build me a V16?" Okay. And Mr. Fischer replied, "Yeah, summer right now. By Christmas, you have this one under your tree. The only thing I need is two V12s and uh -huh. a little money." Okay. And so he, out of two V12s, which he cut it after four cylinders each, or okay. four cylinder banks, he put them together. So the middle parts were removed and the exactly. front on the back. Oh, wow. But there was one problem. You need air and you need cooling and there's no space for the radiator. Yeah. They simply moved the radiators to the back. Okay. And this resulted in a, let's say, not <laughs> so elegant not very air intakes. Those air intakes, but they needed them to grab the cooling air for the radiators that are in the trunk. You can open the trunk and have a look. Okay. There's not much space left for the <laughs> luggage. <laughs> no way. There's two radiators, one on the left and the other one on the right. Really? Yep. It is, it is quite special. It has over 400 horsepower. Okay. Quite a high fuel consumption. Wow. So, I would say... Let's move on. Let's move on. So motorsport cars? Yeah, of course. Great. Yeah. This is the one. By it's the, the way, BT52. I love the colors here. <laughs> yeah. That's the 83 
World Championship car. Oh yeah, that th this that specific car. Nelson Piquet sat in exactly this car oh, when he wow. crossed the line at the Kialami Grand Prix in South Africa, and this okay. is when he won the championship. I love the design. The it's very clean. Yeah, in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful Formula One race cars because it's it's simple, it's clean. As I said, it has those arrow shape. Yeah, it's not too complicated with all those uh, wings and flaps, yeah. and it's uh, it's quite simple compared to today's car. Yeah, but uh, it's a cannonball. It was quite complicated to drive, especially with this power. How much power do we have in that car? It is, in fact, the most powerful engine around. Okay. It has, uh, so the engine was capable of over 1400 horsepower. We had the engine revised, and Mark Zura drove it, test drove it, and he said. <laughs> Himself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's working. Wheel spin up to third and fourth gear, so everything else is great. So, this is an engine we just rebuilt, but we also rebuilding complete cars. Okay. And perhaps that would be an option to take a look at because we have just finished a car which is not that well known. I guess not many people have seen well, it. Well, then let's have a look. So this model I have never seen before. What is that? This is the 2800 GTS okay. by Frua. Frua is or was a Italian design office. But when we got it, it was not in that shape. So we restored it. Okay. I love this paint. What, what, what is the name of that? There's, that's a difficult question because when we got the car, the car was in a red brownish color. <laughs> okay. But we knew from old pictures that the car used to be in a green tone. Then we were lucky. We found in the gas cap, there was Ooh. a small spot which was still green. And then we made a color analysis okay. and then found out the tone. And then we just looked at the different tones from back then and had our tone and it did not perfectly match, so okay. I cannot tell the exact name of the. But let's stick to a nice green color. <laughs> okay, nice green color. <laughs> and another car I don't know is this one. You mean the Look at the, the garment. Really fantastic, never seen that before. Yeah, that's, that's, in fact, this is not an original car. Okay. It was the same concept as with the Frua. Okay. But this was uh, Bertone, the design studio in, in Italy. And uh, Gandini, Marcello Gandini, a very yeah. famous designer, he did the design on the car and they showed it to BMW okay. if they want to do a serial production. Okay. And it was agreed that the car, after it was shown at the car show in Geneva, should move to Munich, but uh -huh. somehow it got lost. So this is a complete rebuild, which we did in the last year. It's a 100% handmade car. Cool. So let's move on. What else we have? Benny, this one is also my favorite. It's the father of all in trees, in fact. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's a four-cylinder, right? It is a four-cylinder and it was built for the racetrack. Yeah, but why four-cylinder? Because, because regarding package, it was the best solution back then, regarding the weight on the front. Yeah. And they decided to have a four-cylinder, a, a high revving concept as they are, yeah. uh, 2.3 liter. And uh, during the different generations of M3s, you have different motor concepts. Yeah. Fours, six, six cylinders, V8, and then six cylinder with turbo. turbocharged. Yeah. So this was the very first, and it is. it has become an icon, and it's totally worth it. It was meant to be a race car, Yeah. and they built it. They had to build 5,000 to race it. Oh, okay. But then they sold over 17,000 of them until the end of production, because Everybody loved it and still do. Yeah, I, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> and this is why we chose to have this car on our YouTube channel as well. So if you guys want to see more about this car, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. It's simply called BMW Group Classic and then you will see tons of videos which you might like. And before we did this take, Joy told me that he has never driven an M3 E30. Yeah. And Driving will be difficult, but keys inside, you can start it. Really? Okay, interview over. Thanks for watching. See you next time on BMW Today. I'm quite excited. I'm going to start the engine. Bye.